Okay. I was getting ready if I needed to. <laughs> Are you good? Yes. Okay. Looks like if you need to go, I no. can. All good. All right. I'd like to call. To, I'm going to turn on my mic first. I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Commission of April 19th, 2023. A printed agenda is available outside the hearing room and a copy of the full agenda, including the staff reports, is available online or at the planning department room 213. The open meetings act is posted just inside the door at the back of the room. If you parked in the parking lot across the street to the north, the gate is open and no parking coupons are needed. Out of courtesy for those attending this meeting, commissioners and the staff, cell phones may not be used in the chamber during any portion of this meeting. We appreciate your cooperation. The Planning Commission action today is final on the following item. 1.3 Special Permit 20014A. Any aggrieved person may appeal final action of the Planning Commission to the City Council or the County Board by filing a notice of appeal with the clerk within 14 days following the action of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission action on all other items is a recommendation to the City Council or County Board. The first item of business is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held April 5th, 2023. So move Campbell. Is there a second? Uh, Adams. Second ball. Jennifer. Yeah, that's how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Jennifer. Ball. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Core. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Edens. Yes. Rodenberg. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Edgerton. Abstain. The next item of business is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be called at the same time and will not be scheduled for a separate public hearing unless there is a request from someone wishing to speak or at the request of a commission member. I will ask Jennifer to read all the consent agenda items into the record. Once those items are read, she will ask if anyone is, if there is anyone wishing to speak. If you wish to speak on an item on the consent agenda, we would ask that you stand and state that item. That item will then be removed from the consent agenda and scheduled as a separate public hearing under section three of today's agenda. All items remaining on the consent agenda will be voted upon in total with a motion for approval. Jennifer, will you please call the items on the consent agenda? Please note that agenda item 1.1, comprehensive plan conformance 23004 is being removed from the consent agenda and scheduled for a public hearing. The first item of consent is comprehensive plan amendment 23007 to amend the Lincoln Lancaster County 2050 comprehensive plan to revise the future land use map to revise the future land use map from the future residential use to future resi to future commercial use on property generally located at North, North 32nd and 33rd streets north of Superior Street. The second item is change of zone 23020 from R5 residential district to H3 highway commercial district on property generally located at North 32nd and 33rd streets north of Superior Street. The next item is special permit 20014A to allow for soil excavation on property generally located at Northwest 40th Street and Highway 34. The Planning Commission action is final unless appealed by Lincoln City Council. Are there any expert communications to be disclosed on these items? No, I don't see any. Are there any expert communications that took place or additional information that you learned while visiting these sites to be disclosed? No. If there's anyone here wishing to speak on the consent agenda items, please stand and state the item. Is there anyone here who wants to speak on any item on the consent agenda? Uh, seeing none, I will take a motion. I would move we approve the consent agenda. Campbell. Second, Eddins. Jennifer. Ball. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Core. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Eddins. Yes. Rodenberg. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Egerton. 
Yes. Motion carried 8 0. There are no requests for deferral, so we will now proceed to public hearing. Prior to staff making a brief presentation, each staff person should state their name, agency, and address. The applicant will then be requested to present his or her testimony, uh, followed by those who wish to testify in support, followed by those who wish to testify in opposition. The staff will then be given an opportunity to respond to the testimony, and the applicant shall have an opportunity for rebuttal. Each person testifying should state their name and address and shall have five minutes to speak unless additional time is requested and granted. The timer will go off after four minutes. The clerk will then indicate you have one minute remaining to wrap up your testimony. Once the final minute has lapsed, the clerk will indicate that your time is up. If during your testimony you have copies of documents or materials you would like distributed to the Planning Commission members and or included as part of the record, please provide them to the clerk. The Planning Commission will vote immediately at the close of the public hearing unless the Commission votes to defer action or continue the public hearing. Jennifer, please call the first public hearing item. First public hearing item is Comprehensive Plan Conformance 23004 to review as to conformance with the 2050 Lancaster Lincoln County Comprehensive Plan, an amendment to the Antelope Valley Redevelopment Plan to add the 18 North Building Redevelopment Project, which includes a five-story multi-unit dwelling with on-site parking on property generally located at 18th and N Street. Uh, Dan Marvin, Urban Development, 555 South 10th Street. Jennifer, did we give a copy of this letter? I did. Okay. Yes. All right. We should probably ask the question about ex parte communications, Jennifer. Sorry. That's all right. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on this application? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Are there any ex parte communications that took place or additional information that you learned while visiting any of these sites to be disclosed? No. Dan, thank you. Well, um, yes, and thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, this is. This is a cleanup on a TIF dollar amount, basically, is what we're here. We need to bring this off consent. Um, the uh, valuations on construction have gone up. The resulting impact would be higher cost, higher increment, higher um, TIF valuation. And because of that, we'd already printed the material. We'd sent it to before you, and the result was um, the easiest way to keep this moving forward and make its way to City Council was to take this off of consent to discuss the change in the valuation of TIF, which is the cost and expected assessed valuation of the project has increased and therefore the estimated available TIF has increased. We're providing a letter, which you have, detailing the increase from an estimate of 2.7 million to 3.5 million of available TIF over the next 20 years. This way, we don't need to re-advertise and go back through the process and hold this over for a couple of weeks. This way, we can continue to move forward with the plan amendment to City Council, which would then follow up with a redevelopment. What you see here, as long as I'm up here, describe the project a little bit, is the project would go on this area near 18th and N Street. Um, the plan area includes some of the right of way. We don't know if we'll be able to do any bicycle uh, lane improvements, um, but the reason the plan area includes those is to address uh, additional mobility for uh, primarily for um, bike traffic probably along N Street, didn't know if it would be along 18th Street or not, but for just being flexible. And um, the project was awarded some ARPA funds, and the ARPA funds will then provide for this building to have a 20% affordability. There could be about 85 units, so that would mean 17 units of this would be affordable uh, for at least 20 years. Um, and other than that, I think it's, it's a good project that we support um, because it's creating multiple goals here. We like, um, we like the mixed income within a building. Um, sometimes that's difficult to do. Um, but we like the mixed income within the buildings. 
and it's in the downtown. So I think that it achieves a lot of our, our particular goals. But we wanted to take it off consent so that we could follow a process to allow an adjustment upward in the TIF value. I'll stop there and answer any questions. Questions for Dan? Great. All right. Um, I, I assume you're both the staff and the applicant then? Yeah, I, yes. Okay. Uh, the applicant is here. If you had any questions, Kent Seacrest is in the room. But um, absent that, I can <laughs> allow you to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kent, do you want to present on behalf of the applicant at this time? Okay. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, is there any testimony in support of this application? Testimony in support? Is there any neutral testimony or testimony in opposition? I don't see any. Um, additional staff questions or applicant questions? Okay, I'll take a motion. I would move that we would approve amended. How about we close the hearing? <laughs> oh, close the hearing. That's not a good idea. I move we close the public hearing. Thank you. Second core. Jennifer. Ball. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Core. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Edens. Yes. Rodenberg. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Motion eight zero. Then I would move we approve comprehensive plan conformance two three zero zero four as amended. Second core. Discussion. I think this looks like a great plan. Um, I, I like that um, in the in the staff report, it talked about that the, the LMI housing will be the exact same as, as the other housing, which I think is very important and, and a great policy to have. Yeah. Anyone else? I like the fact that they're considering the bicycle uh, facilities and lanes uh, along with this project. Agree. I appreciate the update on the on the changes in expenses. Certainly understandable in uh, the circumstances we are now. There's um, great location. Um, appreciate the um, um, pretty significant investment in affordable housing in our community as well. Jennifer, you want to call the vote? Ball. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Core. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Edens. Yes. Rodenberg. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Motion eight zero. Next item for public hearing is text amendment 23006 to amend the Lincoln Municipal Code section 27.62.030 conditional uses agricultural use group to allow storage of commercial vehicles and equipment in the AG and AGR zoning districts. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on this application? Uh, I don't see any. Are there any ex parte communications that took place or additional information you learned while visiting any of this site to be disclosed? No. Tom? Good afternoon. Tom Chaka, planning staff. So this uh, proposal is a text amendment to the Lincoln Zoning Ordinance section 27.62.030 conditional uses for the agricultural use group. The proposed amendment is to add storage of commercial vehicles and equipment as a conditional use in the AG and AGR zoning districts. <clears throat> Conditions that would uh, be part of the text are that Vehicles and equipment must be stored inside a structure or, if outside, be screened. Um, the structures or outside storage area must meet setbacks. Only storage and transport of vehicles and equipments is allowed. No fueling um, facilities allowed. Would need to have a minimum lot size of three acres and no more than 5,000 square feet of the lot may be devoted to the use. The purpose of this text amendment is to legalize a commercial operation at 8500 Leanna Lane, which is outside the city limits but within the three mile zoning jurisdiction. 
The site is used for a party bus business. Their buses are stored on the site and employees come and go to pick up and return the buses. Building and Safety was made aware of this zoning violation uh, from receiving complaints. I also have uh, Terry Cathy here from Building and Safety will um, come up and, and talk a little bit after I'm finished. <clears throat> this proposed text amendment does not fit into an agricultural use group. The agricultural use group is for uses related to agriculture with some other compatible uses such as garden centers, solar, kennels, veterinary facilities, and campgrounds. Approval of this, this text also would go far beyond what is allowed today under home occupation. Home occupations are allowed as a conditional use today, but only a maximum of 20% of the floor area of the house can be used for the business and only family members residing on the premise can be employed in the business. The proposed text has no provision that the business even be accessory to a house. It could be on vacant ground. Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department reviewed the proposed text and does not support it. They have concerns of increased noise, dust, and storage of hazardous uh, chemicals on site. The 2050 comprehensive plan does not support commercial activity in rural areas of the county. The comprehensive plan does support commercial development within incorporated communities. Rural areas should be for agriculture with some low density residential and other compatible land uses. There is several uh, passages in the comp plan that relate to um, preserving the rural areas for mainly agriculture and related uses. The term commercial vehicle is not defined in the zoning code and there is no definition with this text amendment. That's a very broad term. Commercial vehicle could include garbage trucks, buses, semi trucks, taxis, recreational vehicles, contractor trucks, to name a few. This text could allow or would allow contractor services such as plumbers, electricians, and landscapers to have their businesses on residential property and then allow employees to come and go. They could store their vehicles, they could store all their equipment on site. It just wouldn't allow um, retail out of there. City and county staff have over the years had a long history of commercial uses attempting to locate in the rural areas. These have included trash service, contractor yards, and commercial storage. Adjacent property owners have submitted complaints over the years when these have popped up because, um, you know, in the county, people don't always ask if they can do it. They just go do it. So that this has been a problem over years. The proposed text is not supported by planning or the health department. This text would allow commercial uses in the AG and AGR districts. This would encourage commercial traffic into rural areas and could result in increased maintenance of roads. This would have a negative or this could have a negative impact on residents through increased traffic, noise and dust. This type of use is not associated with rural activities such as farm wineries or ag attractions. Commercial uses should be within incorporated towns and in commercial zoning districts. This proposed text is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Um, I'd like to have Terry Cathy come up and just kind of give a broad overview of what his department 
has received over the years on complaints from businesses in rural areas. Terry Cathy with Department of Building and Safety. Um, over the years, a uh, substantial amount of complaints are generated uh, on the small acreages, typically small acreages, there's some larger acreages that we get them on. But uh, it's for the primary reason is for commercial activities. Uh, people move out to the, people tell us that they move out to the country for the rural, rural living, uh, the quiet, the, the, to get away from city activities. Um, we've had things from, like Tom stated, garbage haulers. Um, we've had uh, practice facilities for baseball teams, uh, running out storage. Uh, trying to think of some others. Um, we obviously contractors, and we we know we know the contractors typically, so they pretty much generate traffic by people coming out, picking up their trucks, picking up contractor supplies uh, on these sites, which again generates traffic and and what people tend to to, to want to stay away from. So over the years, we've investigated quite a few of these, and that's pretty much the reasons what they, that they give is that they, they're living in AG, AGR properties to get away from this stuff. So um, like Tom said, that with the language being arbitrary for commercial trucks, I'm not sure that enforcement aspect of it would be real easy for us to, to regulate. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it, more in general terms. And to add to that, the, the other thing, although the text says it's only for storage of vehicles and picking them up and, and taking them, it, it would be almost impossible to regulate if they're doing mechanical work on them, um, washing or, or other things. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have to be on a complaint basis. Questions? Questions for staff, for Tom or Terry? Yeah, Dick? Tom, if this were inside the city limits, it'd have to be on commercial land, correct? Correct. Okay. <coughs> Tom, is there some other um, solution besides doing a blanket text amendment mm -hmm. for the whole city and county that could just be applied to this property? No special permit or anything mm. like that? No. I think as you talked, you answered the question that I had, which was about hazardous material storage, which is more about in general, if this text amendment passed, that could be, but not necessarily that this particular property owner is. Maybe not this particular one, but, but since it's. Because, and right, and the regulations. Opens the door to right. a lot of other things. Yep. Okay. Great. And. In, in this circumstance, um, how was this brought to the attention of the? I believe building and safety received a building and complaint. Safety. Okay, that's correct. Okay, great. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, we'll take testimony from the applicant. Good afternoon, Chairman Edgerton, members of the commission. Uh, I suppose the first order of business would be, I would request uh, some additional time. If I could have nine minutes, maybe. Otherwise, I'm going to have to speak really fast. <laughs> so. That's fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Austin. I'm an attorney, and my address is 2511 South 77th Place, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68506. I'm here today representing Dan and Tammy Casey, the applicants for this text change. Dan and Tammy are here seated in the, the front row with me. They have operated a small party bus service since 2014. They've been storing the buses at their property, 8500 Leona Lane, since that time. Their property is a three acre tract of ground located generally in the vicinity of North 84th Street and Bluff Road, just to the north. In 2018, they did receive a visit from the building official. It was regarding the storage of the buses. They were told at that time that if the buses were sheltered and there were no complaints, no action would be taken, and no action was taken at that time. Since then, they have been operating without incident at their current location. 
until last year. A neighborhood complaint generated an inspection by the building official, who at that time told the Casey's that storage of buses on property zoned AG was not permissible. Uh, the Casey's uh, explored their options uh, as to what they could do. One of the options was to uh, seek legalization of the storage of vehicles in the AG district. And so we're here today with a proposal to do just that. Now the Casey's operate about five or six buses from time to time. Other than the office work related to their business, uh, no other business related activity other than the storage of the buses occurs on this property. Drivers pick up and drop off the buses, but all passenger pickups and all party activities occurs at other locations. Fueling uh, will occur elsewhere. I was advised by them that they do have a small fueling facility, but that would go by the wayside uh, if this were approved. They have no hazardous materials that they, that they utilize. Uh, major repairs are made elsewhere. The Casey's maintain their buses and their property in a clean and tidy manner. This is supported by one of the letters that you have received uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Satoff, uh, 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 one of the neighbors. The upshot is that this is a very minimal intrusion of business activity into the AG district. Now, since the United States Supreme Court decision in Village of Euclid versus Ambler in 1926, there's never been any real disagreement with the general proposition that commercial uses may and should be excluded from residential districts. Uh, justifications have always included uh, the, the need for uh, uh, vo avoiding increased traffic, uh, need to, for increased fire protection, elimination of odors, smoke, fumes, aesthetic concerns, avoid, avoidance of noise, all laudable goals. However, the AG and the AGR districts are not residential districts per se. They are rural areas, and while the planning department has, uh, has indicated to you a few of the goals and policies set forth in the comprehensive plan regarding these rural areas, these goals and, and policies are apparently being given only lip service in the actual promulgation of the zoning code. Under the use groups outlined in chapter 2706 of the zoning code, uses in the AGR district, whether by permission, conditional use, or special use include, of course, agriculture, agricultural attractions, uh, which are entertainment venues, confined feeding facilities, farm winerage, wineries, heritage centers, which can include the sale at retail of crafts and other goods, market gardens, pet cemeteries, sale barns, urban gardens, apartment hotels, residential health facilities. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, among the other care for residential care facilities, cemeteries, clubs, lodges, educational facilities, including industrial trade schools, garden centers, kennels, outdoor seasonal sales and veterinarian facilities. The AGR district, which we mentioned in our, our proposal, has a somewhat similar but much more limited number of commercial uses. Some, but certainly not all, of these uses support agriculture. The point, of course, is that as written, the Lincoln Zoning Code by no means reflects a policy or desire to wholly exclude commercial activity from these areas. This is not a question of whether to permit commercial uses, but instead which ones can and should be permitted. Approval of one more conditional use that may have some commercial flavor in those districts, I would suggest, is not really such a big lift. And so when you consider what commercial use, what a commercial use is and whether it should be excluded from a particular district, we would suggest you look not simply to the label of commercial, but to whether or not the proposed use has those characteristics that are normally considered when attempting to exclude a commercial use from a zoning district. Here, the point of the proposed conditions is to limit any aesthetic problem. The proposal would require that the vehicles be sheltered either in a, either in a structure or within a, a wholly enclosed and screened fencing so that the use is invisible. There would be no fueling. No activity that would involve odors, trash, or smoke. There would be no traffic problems, per se, because the customers are not coming and going from this site. It is simply the drive-ons and drive-offs of, uh, of, uh, of the drivers. With the conditions that we propose, uh, the only noise is out of an occasional motor vehicle. We suggest this proposal would not condone the type of use that is offensive or intrusive 
uh, and that which is ex traditionally excluded from uh, area zone non-commercial. Um, addressing a couple of points mentioned by the staff report, as regards dust, we suggest that the activities already occurring on these gravel roads in rural areas outside of the corporate limits already kicks up a heck of a lot more dust than a few buses. My client's property is located uh, just a few hundred feet from North 84th Street. At that location, North 84th Street is not paved. The comings and goings of garbage trucks, agricultural equipment, and other commercial vehicles in these rural areas obviously generates as much dust now uh, or more than a few buses would, would generate. As regards the degradation of roads, these agricultural areas are expected to handle heavy traffic, heavier than the vehicles utilized by my clients. Combines, tractors, trucks, even big mobile homes utilized uh, or owned by residents regularly traverse these areas. The storage of a few buses, we suggest, will not significantly increase degradation of the roads. Finally, the problem that my clients now encounter is not unique to their situation. Uh, even as building a safety mentioned, uh, there are a number of property owners who even now bring home their, their trucks or their equipment and uh, related to their businesses or occupations and store them in these areas. Uh, this ordinance would perhaps regularize that sort of activity. Uh, with the conditions that we have proposed, it might actually make the areas better if such activity is legalized with restrictions. Um, while, the, while the planning staff mentions that uh, there are, we have no restriction or requirement that there be a dwelling located on the premises, when in actuality, if you have three acres and you're only allowed to use 5,000 feet for storage, it's highly unlikely that any business is going to suggest that it wants to make use of a three acre tract of ground for 5,000 square feet of storage. And that's why we limited this so that you know, it, it really will end up being a type of accessory use. Uh, they list a number of concerns that have been encountered over the years, uh, vehicles, store, even garbage trucks. That are, but if these are parked wholly within structures uh, or screened and limited to 5,000 square feet, only permitted outside the corporate limits, even that would be a rather limited intrusion into these districts. Uh, rural areas are accustomed to having agricultural equipment located on ag agricultural premises, and they're often left outside and in the open. Uh, finally, uh, these are three acre tracts of ground. Uh, as you may recall, the old, uh, the old grid, uh, grid type uh, platting would have city blocks that were about three acres. So that's actually the amount of land that we're looking at here. And what this would do would be allow one additional type of, of use, properly regularized, uh, that would make better use of the land that's being made of now, uh, that oftentimes goes to, goes to weeds. Um, in sum, we suggest first that these rural districts are not even now commercial free zones. Second, that the proposed uses with suggested re restrictions is not an onerous type of commercial use that would create a blight upon neighborhoods. And finally, that from a practical standpoint, this is occurring out in these areas now and this might regularize that activity and control it. I would also add at, at this point that uh, our proposal was, to some extent, uh, a first shot, uh, an attempt to uh, you know, see what would be permissible or, or allowable. Certainly such things as uh, defining the vehicles, certainly fine with us if, if the staff thinks that would be better. If there are other restrictions, even if this should be a special permit as opposed to a conditional permit, uh, all of those things we'd be happy to to discuss with, with staff uh, and, and see if there's some way to, to bring about something that would allow the Casey's to continue with you know, this activity and get, keep it within proper bounds. And with that, uh, I, I'm, I'm done. I do have a letter from an, addition, uh, an additional letter from a neighbor that we would like to submit. I do have a sufficient number of copies there for you. Excellent. Thank you. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for the applicant? Mine is. Go ahead, Lorenzo. Um, so item six, just for clarification, it's 5,000 square feet that you are requesting, right? I'm sorry, say 5,000. Square feet? Square feet. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
and what was the question, sir? Uh, the other question. You, you answered it. I was, it was, oh, it's it 5,000. 5,000 square feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's 5,000 square feet. My question was, what was the nature of the uh, complaint that was made? Um, clearly, you have some support from some neighbors. So my question is, um, what was the nature of the complaints? I, I don't know. Um, I don't think, and I, Terry Stone, I don't think that they, that they are willing, uh, I think it's customary for them not to tell uh, what the nature of the complaint is. And so I don't know. Mm. Uh, and I think they may be here today. So I think okay. that might be a question for them. Additional questions for the applicant, Rich? Uh, yes, Mr. Austin. Um, screening, is that, uh, is the height specified? Uh, no, it, 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 is, it is more subjective uh, in terms of it has to completely obscure the buses so that they cannot be seen from adjacent properties. So how tall is a bus? So you, you would have a 12-foot fence? That would be the idea. Mm -hmm. The highest property, so we're up higher. Okay. Other questions for the applicant, Dick? Bill, have you sat down with uh, planning and discussed options? We had an initial discussion uh, with uh, uh, one of the planning staff, and we went over a couple of proposals, and uh, we got negative vibes from it and left and said, well, we're just going to have to, you know, fire a cannon and see how, <laughs> see how things go. Again, we'd be happy to sit down and see if we could work something out. That, that would be great. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we had applicant testimony. So, uh, testimony in support. Testimony in support of this application. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Schroeder. And uh, I'm representing my wife as well as Merelda Schroeder. We're from 8501 Liana Lane, directly um, across from Dan and, Tess, Dan and Tammy Casey and uh, Elite Party Buses. We would like to express our support for this proposed amendment to Lincoln Municipal Code Section 27.62.030, which seeks to permit the storage of commercial vehicles and equipment in AGR and AG zoning districts. Our family has been residing on Leanna Lane since 2006, long before Elite Party Buses commenced its operations. Throughout the years, we have never encountered any issues related to their business activities or their location. There have been no complaints concerning noise pollution, traffic congestion, property damage resulting from the community's company's commercial vehicles. Additionally, we have not experienced any litter or debris or um, on our property or on the lane attributable to elite party buses. I would also like to draw attention to the manner concerning the analysis section of the staff report, specifically item number 11. It has been reported that there were numerous complaints from neighboring property owners. However, it is important to note that these complaints are primarily sourced from a single property owner, rendering the statement inaccurate. Furthermore, we can attest that there has never been any trash blowing off or around Casey's property. The owners, Dan and Tammy Casey, invest a considerable amount of time and effort to maintain their property, which is arguably the most well-maintained property on our lane. I would also like to highlight Dan Casey contributes to our community and he has graciously volunteered his time and equipment to grade, fill potholes, and maintain the entire lane, not just the part in front of his house. Additionally, he has offered his equipment for snow removal on numerous occasions and generously donated funds to maintain our lane, including uh, laying rock and helping to spread rock. The Casey's have been exceptional neighbors and have demonstrated outstanding business practices. Their storage of businesses on our property, on their property has had virtually no impact on the surrounding community and they have maintained open communication with everyone on the lane regarding any concerns. As we conclude, it is imperative to acknowledge the fundamental role small businesses play in our communities. 
They serve as essential employment opportunities for countless individuals within and around our county and are a vital component of our economy. Failing to allow this proposed amendment would likely have devastating consequences for elite party buses and likely, and likely force them to cease operations or at the very least temporarily halt their business. Dan and Tammy Casey are reputable business owners in the community who are responsible for providing livelihoods to numerous families. Their impeccable track record of being respectful to their neighbors and their conscientious stewardship of their property and our lane is evident to all. Therefore, we urge the council and the commission to approve this amendment, which would include elite party buses to continue providing employment opportunities and valuable services to the community while maintaining their business operations in a responsible manner. Thank you. Any questions? So you said your your property is directly like across the lane, is that correct? Directly across the lane to the south. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We yep. appreciate it. Any other testimony in support? Testimony in support? Is there any neutral testimony? Okay, testimony in opposition. Good afternoon. My wife, Tammy, my is Rich Iman, uh, 8420 Leanna Lane, directly west of uh, 8500. Uh, I just got a few notes here. I'm not going to say I don't, didn't make a speech out. Uh, we've been there since 2018, and uh, it seems gotten worse uh, and on the roads and, and everything else. I guess what I'm concerned with is text amendment 23006. It's going to lower the property value on, on my property, our property. I, I'm feeling that uh, uh, if it would have been commercial, chances are I probably would not have bought it uh, at, at that point. So I, I'm consider the commercial, I, I'm not in favor of. Okay. Uh, the noise of the equipment, uh, it, it's a constant. We do have a backyard we use a lot. And uh, when our grandkids are out there, we try to carry on conversation, and we can't carry on conversation with our grandkids. Uh, so the noise is, is a lot. And, and even the storage, if you're just going to store them, they're going to be coming and going. I, I, I'm not understanding the difference between no, no buses and just storage or uh, running the business as it is. Because uh, the noise was power washers going, uh, employees washing the outside, the buses run while they clean the inside. They'd run for two, three, four hours at a time, uh, constantly out there in, in our backyard, you know, 150 feet away. So the, the noise is unbearable, okay? Uh, CDL drivers, they're coming and going all hours of the night. Uh, I didn't bring the records with me, but we got a uh, timestamp on pictures, uh, two o'clock in the morning, midnight. There. Here's a few. Of yeah. Guys yeah. We'll, we'll hand them out. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't do very many. I figured just a few is enough. Uh, uh, like I said, then there's there's several employees coming and going, uh, cleaning the buses inside and out. Uh, and like Jeff said, they're good for the neighborhood. There's a couple of local kids that's working there, which kind of helps them out, but it don't help us out with the noise and everything else that's going on. Uh, and also the commercial equipment using a private driveway, Leanna Lane, uh, as uh, homeowners maintain it. And so the heavy equipment coming and going constantly uh, is an expense to everyone. Uh, we tried to get it to be a county road here. Uh, it's been quite a while ago. And then that wouldn't have been an issue. County would maintain it, but we uh, it, it got kind of kicked out. With most of them didn't want the county in there taking care of the road. So uh, the dirt uh, with all the traffic coming in and out. 84th Street is gravel, but we can handle dirt from one direction. It's hard to handle dirt from both directions. We got dust coming from every which direction, and we just don't think uh, that be correct. Uh, like I said, there's the pictures. You guys can look through them. Do you want to add anything? Mm -hmm. 
Um, as the attorney said, a few buses coming and going are no big deal. They have five, six buses, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They come, they leave, they come back, they go out again. It's not like they, one, the bus leaves once and comes home. No, then they clean them again, then they go out again, and then from 1.30, I have, we have on our camera, 1.30, they start coming home in the morning. Every half hour, they come home for five buses or six. And the drivers take the garbage out of the buses, put it in the garbage can, which is a commercial garbage can. Kowon, down goes the lid. And not only are the buses coming and going, all of those drivers are coming and going. And they start their cars in the winter and let them run, and the buses run and cackle and run. And as you can see in the pictures, the lights shine right in our back door the strobe lights, the headlights, and that's not just the buses, the drivers do that also. So for the attorney, a few buses coming and going might not be an issue until you're living next to those few buses coming and going all night. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Questions? You guys live on the same side, you're on the west, to the west of them. Yep, straight Correct. past them. Between Correct. 84th Street and so are and the them. buses parked in the back? Is that why you guys are getting the lights? They turn them, and the mechanic, which is there full time, puts the buses out for the drivers to take, and he turns on the lights and has them sitting there running for the drivers to take. Okay. And that might be 20 minutes, 40 minutes before the driver gets there. Thank you. And, and I think the... Uh, just the way it's situated, uh, 5,000 square feet will, will be hard to handle that much, regardless, uh, to hide them, I guess, out of eyesight, because uh, there are two-story houses. We're not, and we are below them a little ways, but. That's why I don't know how the gate or the fence at 20 feet is at even gonna foot, do yeah. it, because the buses are 20.7 feet yeah. high, 12. and we're down from them, there, I don't. They cannot build a fence big enough to, so that we will not see them. Any other questions? Do you know how long the business has been operating? No. They said since two thousand four. Yeah, just, just what they so said. They were. It was there. It when was there. Bought the house in twenty. When we bought the house, the buses were not visible. So. We didn't know anything about them. Right. Any other questions? Thank you very much. One more. Additional testimony in opposition. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Heather Ferguson. I'm at 8601 Leanna Lane, just across the road in Kitty Corner from Elite Party Buses. Um, I'm here about the request to continue working in our neighborhood. This company operates a party bus business that includes approximately five to six buses, many employees that come and go throughout the day on their three acres. Um, I would like to say that I have been calling into building and safety for the last few years, talking to Dustin and Greg um, with complaints to the noise is the biggest one. Um, the buses typically run engines most of the weekend, many times during the week, double that when they have their power washers going along with the diesels, when they're backing up or have their party lights going at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. That power washing leads to runoff into neighboring properties and runoff eventually gets into Stevens Creek. Um, the wear and tear on our road, like it was mentioned, Leanna Lane is maintained by our neighborhood individually. The traffic is not just the buses, but the many employees that come and go throughout the day from drivers, mechanics, cleaning staff, deliveries of fuel, and other repair workers. Um, the resale value is a big one. I am in real estate and I analyze property values of homes daily. I know that this decreases all of our home values, especially those that are closest to the business. And not only does it affect our dollar amount, but it affects the desire of someone wanting to purchase our homes near this party bus business. This vastly limits our, the desirability of our homes to sell easily and quickly for top dollar. Quiet and enjoyment is the number five. We have chose to live in the country for a reason. 
and have had that right infringed upon. There are times that we want to enjoy our front porch, watch the lightning, but we can't do that because those buses are running and it really grates on your nerves um, and those flashing lights. This does not make for a peaceful situation. This amendment not only affects Leanna Lane, but all the acreage owners that are within that three mile radius of Lincoln. This amendment takes away the, any recourse that homeowners have against businesses like this coming to our neighborhood and eliminating their quiet, their right to quiet enjoyment. I don't want this to be the experience of other homeowners. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Additional testimony in opposition. Okay, uh, staff questions. Does anyone have staff questions? I have a few. Yeah, come on up. Actually, maybe I only have one. That probably makes you guys happy. <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure that I am clear. If they were storing these buses, vans in a building right now, that would still be against our current zoning code. Correct, because it would be considered commercial storage, which is not allowed. Okay, thank you. Lorenzo? I have some other questions, so I'm fine. Dick? Um, when I see some of these areas along Highway 2 and so on that have uh, storage of, of motor homes and things, boats and that type of stuff during the winter, what, what zoning is that? Are you speaking of old Highway 2 within the city of Lincoln no, limits no. or where exactly? Outside, outside the city's limits. All, many times outside Lancaster <laughs> County. But I've, I've been up and down Highway 2 a lot and I'm trying to think of where there's outside storage. Um, there's, there's, now, some outs, there's some areas that have outside storage on them. They would have to be zoned commercial or somebody's just doing it and nobody's complained and we don't know about it okay steve henderson with the planning department 555 south 10th street i did want to address one of the comments that was made in terms of um the applicant met with staff and we weren't willing to work on this because i i do want to make sure it's clear that we do have a long history of working with applicants on trying to find out uh solutions and so that is definitely the way we we operate and, and i'm addressing the question because i was at the, the meeting with bill austin and to discuss this and, and it really has to go down to fundamentally this is not a compatible use and also to remind everyone here this is not about one bus service so the the facts of one bus company at liana lane is, is nice to know for example because you hear from neighbors who are opposed and and the applicants are trying to explain how they think they run an operation that is compatible. But having been in the, the city for 33 years and taking these complaints, and Terry Cathy can tell you as well, there's a, a lot of enforcement and there's a lot of other issues that are just as incompatible as this. And you heard about an operation that at 2 and 3 in the morning, that's when they need to come back, having finished off a, a party for the evening. So the, the late hours is certainly one of that, but that would be some other operations like a garbage service would probably not have late hours. But from what we have seen when we have contractors and everything else who've wanted to move out in the area, it was one fundamentally um, opposed what is in the comprehensive plan. It's pretty clear that this wouldn't just be one or two people out there that we have every year to deal with. This would be hundreds. We would literally have hundreds of businesses because let me also give you an idea of the kind of calls that we receive. Oh, there's this farm property. It has about 10,000 square feet of accessory buildings. It'd be great for my business X, landscaping company, contractor, heating, whatever it is. So we get those calls all the time from people who are like, I, I really don't want to pay the prices in the city. I'd rather go out into the county, into a rural area, an acreage area, whatever it would be, and locate my business there. And for all the reasons that are listed in the staff report, there's a lot of reasons why this is incompatible but it is also just a negative impact on the Lincoln and Waverly and all of the people who do invest in commercial property. They spend their time and money to get the commercial property ready, but yet then we do a text amendment that would allow all of these same commercial uses, fairly heavy commercial uses, to locate um, in the county. And Terry can also tell you that 
A 5,000 square foot minimum, oh, and they're just going to be in the 5,000 square feet, is nearly impossible to enforce. And the example we would give is we get a lot of complaints about used car salesmen, not to pick on them, just one example, <laughs> that some of them, a lot of them do great business, they park all over the place. Building safety goes out, there's been a complaint, you're violating the, the space you're supposed to be in, cars are moved, three days later, new complaint. Go back out, I mean, it's just a cycle that goes through. So I can imagine 5,000 square feet, you go out there and there's stuff over a 20,000 square foot area. Oh, sorry about that. It gets back in the 5,000 square foot area. Well, what's going on in that building over there? Oh, the business <laughs> is not in that building. Well, the building safety, when they have a complaint, no, the business is going on in that building. Now the enforcement is you have to go through an actual legal process to actually find out what is going on in the building. And that was also part of the problem with this, is that let's say you put up a 2,000 square foot storage building, it can only be used for storage. Well, once the buses, cars, trucks, whatever it goes into the building, now we get the complaints about, they're actually operating their business in there. The employees are in there eight hours a day. They're working on the vehicles. They're working on the air conditioner units, whatever it would be. So now we have an enforcement nightmare in trying to figure out, well, are they really working there, not just storing the, the, the buses there? Um, and so when we were looking at it as a whole, it was also, too, a matter of you have one neighborhood here who's been following this one issue. How do we notify the, all the other acreage residents in the county who we get the phone calls about things going on next door of this text amendment? This is a significant change and one that we wouldn't support. And I'd also want to quickly then address, it came down to the questions about commercial. Well, you allow all these other commercial uses. That's true. Kennels, ag attractions, we have pumpkin patches. We have a lot of other things that are almost always tied to the commercial to, to the agricultural area in agricultural rural areas. We, we don't have garbage services as an allowed use. There are other things that are, that are similar. Um, and so finally, I think I'd also just say when you talk about the trip generation, okay, this is buses, they will talk about a few trips. We have a lot of other businesses that have dozens of trips a day back and forth, as well as the county engineer would tell you that once you get over 400 trips on a rural road, they start looking at it meeting the qualification and need having paid. And so I, that's the other concern is that by spreading commercial uses everywhere throughout the county as a conditional use, you would then be starting to meet in more and more roads the threshold for paving. And then just finally about the commercial that's appropriate in this area, I'd remind you we have a special permit to allow elderly residents who have Alzheimer's, a special permit for them to be in a residential area to look at the traffic impact. And there was a lot of neighbors in our last meeting talking about the traffic impact of four healthcare workers driving their car to a house. And, and that was looked at by the adjacent neighbors as a significant traffic impact, much less garbage trucks coming and going and contractors' trucks coming and going. So, and this is proposed as a conditional use. So those were the reasons why it may seem like we were uninterested in trying to work something out is because we fundamentally didn't see this, whether it was a conditional use or a special permitted use, one that was in conformance with the comprehensive plan, or what we see people want to, why they live in neighborhood area, uh, rural neighborhood areas. So that was just kind of a, a quick background, but that was really the, the thinking behind why we didn't have any interest in trying to work out this text amendment. Any other questions for staff? Okay, thank you. Uh, applicant rebuttal. I hope Mr. Hendrickson, Mr. Hendrickson knows that I wasn't making my remarks in derogation of the planning department. I appreciated them sitting down and talking to us before we had made a decision to apply. Sure. The fact of the matter is, and I think he just confirmed it, we got negative vibes and decided, okay, there's no sense beating our head against the wall. We would go to the planning commission. Sure. And certainly, we're still willing to talk if there's limitations that can make this palatable or far more palatable to them. Um, I understand his, uh, Steve's concerns about enforcement, but you know, that's the enforcement of any zoning violation. When someone has a home occupation in town, they'll go, oh no, no, I don't have this or I don't have that, and you have to dog after them and, and, and get it done. There are people that violate the yard restrictions. There are people who put up buildings in the right-of-way, all those sorts of things. 
uh, present difficulties in enforcement, but actually difficulty in enforcement is almost, uh, you know, it, it, it's always going to be. It, it's, uh, uh, um, that's what happens with enforcement. And there are people that intend to violate, and certainly the cases don't. Um, we want to mention the discussion that they had about property values. Uh, you know, I think the proof is kind of in a pudding on that. I don't know about anybody else's, but property values out there, based upon the county assessor's uh, determinations, all went up substantially. So they don't seem to be losing property value because of these buses. Now, the Iamans said that they have been there since 2018, and we're in 2023, and they have these concerns. now. They have talked to the uh, uh, to my clients, uh, and certainly as regards to lights, it's my understanding uh, from Tammy that they tried to address that by not turning the lights on, uh, and so avoiding that problem. Uh, so uh, I think I, I think we're they have tried to work with the neighbors. They want to try to work with the city. Uh, yes, we're trying to keep the business going out there. It's difficult trying to find the storage in town for the, a business such as this. The land is expensive, uh, but we think it's sufficiently limited here that there will be no real intrusion. Uh, we'll have sufficient, you know, limitations on it, uh, the amount of storage, those things such as that. And again, if if we can come up with something that would limit this, I, I doubt if you can really just put in the ordinance that you know party buses are allowed. But perhaps there's something that we could come up with to say, all right, you know, the most onerous ones, those that. Uh, would maybe have trash and odor associated with them, limit those. But, um, and I think that's basically it. Again, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant at this time? Okay. Thank you very much. So, Dick, you want to make a motion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I move to close the public hearing. Second of all. Thank you. Jennifer? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Hegerton? Yes. Motion carried 8 0. Uh, I would move to deny text amendment 23006. Is there a second? Second, Edens. Discussion? Yeah, I can totally empathize with the family and what they've built up since 2014. Uh, I think they're doing a good job in keeping a clean operation. My concern is the door it opens for a lot of other things that aren't as well taken care of <coughs> throughout the county. And so I'm, I'm hoping that, that Mr. Austin will come up with something in working with the um, planning department that might accomplish or allow their ability to stay in place but not open the door for a lot of other operations. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, but that's that would be my goal. Gloria? Um, I empathized with the neighbors. I live in Central Lincoln. I have college students who like to rent the party buses. They get, um, now the college kids are loud, that's a whole different issue. You guys don't have large card college students, I don't think, but even just the bus, that when it's sitting there on the street running over that time, and we're probably a lot closer than you guys out in rural, they're probably 50 foot from my bedroom window. And they do, two in the morning, when the bars close, that's when they drop off. Um, so I understand that sound and in a rural community how that would be disruptive, especially times six. And th that's why I, voted to deny it as well, and the can of worms it opens. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I um, plan to deny it as well, um, but similar to Commissioner Campbell, I commend for building a, seems like a great business, um, started perhaps as a home-based business and grew out, um, which is great, but two, it opens the door for other uses, and um, as the text is written today, um, I, I think it, it would be difficult to enforce, um, which would uh, propose other uses outside of the nature of agriculture um, and the conditional uses around that. So um, I'm in, a, in agreement with Commissioner as well. 
I agree um, with my fellow commissioners. This, um, when we have a text amendment like this, this affects the whole county. And so while you may be very good business operators, and this may be, you know, we, we, this opens the doors to, to so many other things that can happen in the community um, that we, we have to kind of look at infrastructure and roads and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would be, um, you know, if something could be worked out like on a site by site basis, I might be amenable to that. Um, but I, I, I can understand. Um, I live across the street from an elementary school and, um, you know, I have the buses running and I'm like, why? Why are they still running? Why do they leave them running in the bus cutout? You know, I'm like, oh my God. And that's during the day. I can't even imagine like at night. So um, I, I understand what the neighbors are going through. Um, but we can't just open this up countywide. I agree. I wish we could uh, vote on this on a case by case, but um, we're uh, talking about opening a can of worms here. And as far as property values, um, I'm in the business of evaluating properties for my clients. Um, the, the county and the assessment, they look at square footage, they look at uh, nearby comparables, age of the house, type of, the, of the, the building. They do not take into consideration uh, whether you're parked next to garbage trucks or whether your house is next to garbage trucks or you have a beautiful pond outlook. Uh, that's, I, I can see that, you know, with the noise factor and, and uh, other factors that have been brought up here in opposition that it could uh, reduce a property value. But uh, again, I may have said in this case, uh, it's, it's okay, but we don't have that option. We're talking about a countywide, uh, again, opening a can of worms, and I will also vote to deny um, I really have nothing to add with what has been stated by um, my commissioners. I will also vote to uh, deny. I, we're simply just not in a position at this point to wordsmith what's been put in front of us. Um, and so as, as it's written and, and as it was presented, um, I, I just am worried about that slippery slope and the proliferation of commercial activity throughout the community. Um, we certainly appreciate that um, it seems like our applicant is a very um, reputable business um, and runs a runs it well and is considerate of, of the neighbors in, in many respects but uh, at this point I um, will be supporting the motion to deny Jennifer Boa yes Campbell yes Core yes Cruz yes Edens yes Runeberg yes Ryman Yost yes Edgerton yes Motion carried 8 0. At this time, anyone wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so. <laughs> uh, seeing none, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Campbell? Second, Evans. Jennifer? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Motion carried 8 0. Thank you. We are adjourned.